Welcome back to my channel. Manga name the tyrant wants to be good. I hope you guys enjoy and if you do please like and subscribe to Manga Recap. The story starts with a girl named Dorothea Millionaire, the princess of the Yuvia Empire, who now living is her second chance in life, and she doesn't want to make the same mistakes that she did in her former life. This time her goal and purpose in this life is to be the good person because in her former life, she was evil and known as the tyrant. After killing the crown prince, her older brother Raymond, and usurping the throne, she becomes the emperor of the Uvia. And eliminating those who stood in her way and sharing wealthy and power with those she favored. However, the life of surplus wealth and power ended in destruction. The man she loved hated her and chose death over her. And those people whom she shared her power with used that power against her and strangled her. The people pointed their fingers at her and called her a tyrant. And their anger set her palace on fire and beckoned her death. Dorothea Millionaire the tyrant was granted a new life more than like a second chance. It's a chance to turn her life around a life stained with evil and regret. Killing Raymond and suspering the throne was the birth of her beginning of all her regrets, so she just decided to not kill Raymond again and try not to hate her brother. But the way Raymond bothers her, she has second thoughts about this. Raymond just wants to spend some time with Dorothea, but she finds him annoying and tells him to quiet down. Raymond apologizes for being too loud. Ray is the crown prince of the Uvira Empire and also Dorothea's older brother. Dorothea usually spends her time reading books, and she tells Raymond to do the same, but Raymond is not smart like her, and it bores him to read books. Dorothea thinks Ray doesn't work hard, and yet he is more than she will ever have just because he is the crown prince. Raymond tells Dorothea to play with him outside, but Dorothea refuses and tells him to play alone. And the governess tells Raymond to not bother the princess during her studies. And she is impressed that Dorothea already studying the history of Uvra. Dorothea even remembers the whole book while reading. The governess is so impressed by her talent for memorizing, so she decides to tell the king about her intelligence. But Dorothea tells her not to alert his majesty, the Emperor Karnon Millionaire, Dorothea's father. The word father always felt very foreign to her. They may be related by blood, but this has no significance in her case, for Dorothea did not inherit the qualification of a millionaire. Dorothea mother Empress Alice passed away during childbirth and the emperor always kept his distance from her, the baby whose birth took away his beloved wife. In the former life Dorothea used to try so hard to catch her father's eye. She would fall in front of him on purpose, and she would also show off her smartness. She always strived to be better than Raymond. However, her father would never give her a second glance. But with Ray, things were different, without having to do anything at all. Ray received gifts from Karnon, and they even shared meals. Dorothea always wondered why their father cared so much more for Ray, who just messed around. And why wouldn't he ever spare her a glance? Is it because she was not the chosen one? She started to hate Ray and despise him, and she took every opportunity to be cruel to him and was only satisfied once she took what he had. The more Dorothea is crueler with Ray, the more her relationship with the king worsens. Dorothea always longed and craved for love, but her life was too cruel for that love. Her love was always one-sided and unrequited, and so the seed of evil proliferated in the fertile soil of her anger and resentment, which eventually gave birth to the envious soul trampling evil that steals from others and greedily devours them. Since Dorothea got that much hate in her first life, she just don't want to do any effort on the life of second chance, so she decides to not impress anyone and just stay away from her father and Ray. And it might be best for her if she to be good in this life. Dorothea and the governess head on a walk. During their walk, they head to the garden the king made for his dear wife Alice, who was homesick, and Dorothea used to come there often in her former life. And the king also happened to be there, and asked who is she to dare enter Alice's garden. Governess tells him that she is Princess Dorothea. The king asks if the girl doesn't know how to greet the emperor. Was the princess not taught that? 
The governess told him that the princess is very clever and intelligent, and she is very much aware of all the proper etiquettes of the imperial court, and so Dorothea greet the emperor. The emperor asks her age. Dorothea is eight years old. And the emperor asks what's so intelligent about her. And Dorothea just said that the governess just flatters her. There is nothing intelligent about her. But the governess tells about how humble and bright she is for her age, and she has already memorized the entire genealogy of the millionaire family. The king tells her to recite it, but Dorothea is sure that the emperor is well aware of the genealogy of the imperial family. She asks if perhaps the emperor doesn't know that. The emperor asked if Dorothea testing him, but Dorothea answered she just merely trying not to waste the emperor invaluable time. After all, he was so busy that he had not had a moment to spare to see his daughter since her birth. She is just doing her best not to waste both of their time. The emperor realizes that the governess is right about Dorothea being clever, and so the emperor asks if there is anything she would like to have. Dorothea is surprised because the king never asked her anything like this before. And if she were the old her in her former life, she would be overjoyed, unfortunately. She doesn't want a single thing from the emperor, but she can't refuse to answer the emperor, so she says she would like the finest wine made in her name. The emperor gives her a cold look and asks the governess what she taught this child. How could a girl of her age talk about wine like this? Dorothea tell him that she read it in a book called The Portrait of Babelua. There's a scene where Labeled is enjoying a glass of fine wine with her lover, so she becomes curious and wants to taste fine wine ever since. And the king surprised that how a child this young managed to read a difficult book such as that. And so the king decides to let her have the finest wine made in her name. After the garden incident, the governess hoped that the emperor would take an interest in Dorothea, but he never came by to see her. The governess tries to make Dorothea feel better by saying that the emperor must be very busy, but Dorothea knows that her father simply isn't the parent type. The governess is always down and out when something like this happens. Dorothea decides to avoid all things that detract from her resolution to be good. If it were the old her, she would have made Rux trying to prove that she was better than Ray, and the emperor would have punished her half a dozen times by now. Dorothea thinks of her as a fool for all the things she did, and she realizes that being good is doing nothing at all. The moment she tries to do something, she will bear hatred from others, resulting in her anger. And time Raymond arrives and asks about Dorothea, and she runs away. Raymond wants to show her how to weld the Spirit of Light, and Dorothea thinks if Raymond comes to tease her. Welding the Spirit of Light is said to be a unique blessing for the millionaire, but that is a very distant story millionaire power, which was said to have made the sunrise, has become desperately weak, and it has now reached a point of only being able to light small fires. And over time, Millinaire is born who is unable to weld spirit at all. Dorothea, a half-worthy princess who can't even weld a spirit, Dorothea is completely excluded from that hallowed tradition. And this gives people one more reason not to love her, including the emperor. In her defiance against God, she burned with even more fervor in her jealousy of Ray, who needs the spirit of light. It is nothing more than a thin sliver of power, maintained by an old fairy tale. Dorothea thinks this as a pitiful firefly, so she used her sword to take the power from the spirit. From the throne she declared the end of the age of mythology and the beginning of the age of humanity with a bloody sword in her hand. But alas, has failed. As she was executed a few years later for tyranny, the spirit indeed determines the quality of an emperor. Dorothea humble downfall, and she thinks that must have been a punishment from the great legend for her arrogance. Raymond also wanted to introduce her to his friend who came by, but Dorothea has no interest in meeting his friend and decides to head back to her room and take a nap, but she bumps into another kid. The kid apologizes and asks if she is hurt, and Dorothea is shocked to see him. The person standing before her was the man she loved the most in her former life, and was also her husband, and it was her greed that killed him, the man who loathed her the most. And since the day Dorothea returned, she hadn't forgotten him even for a day. Dorothea started to cry, and Theon thought that she might be hurt. He gave her his handkerchief, 
and Dorothea told him that she missed him and called him by his name. Theon was surprised how she knew his name even though they never met before, but he decides to hold that thought, and tries to make her stop crying and wipe her tears off. And Dorothea doesn't believe the person who resented her so is very much alive standing in front of her and more radiant than ever she is happy to see him alive and well so she starts to cry even more and Theon gives her a big smile and tell her to stop crying. And Raymond came from the middle of nowhere and he freaked out to see Dorothea crying and her hurt leg. He grabbed Theon and asked if he was the one who upset Dorothea, and Theon apologized. Raymond was so mad he had never seen Dorothea cry like this even though when she was a baby. Dorothea stopped him and told him that she not crying because something got in her eye that's all. Ray believed in her immediately and asked if her eyes were all right now. Theon was shocked that the princess covered up his insolence. Raymond apologized to Theon for jumping to a conclusion and introduced Theon to Dorothea as his new friend. And Theon greets Dorothea like a gentleman. Dorothea sees the hope of light because this is their new beginning no story has been written yet, and she thinks if she could renounce her cruel demands for love and let go of the tragedies of the past, could Theon spare a glance for her in this life? As she thinking about her dream world, she hears the voice behind her. That voice belongs to Theon's first and last love, Julia Delavine. In her former life, Theon had no choice but to marry Dorothea due to her persistence and the oath between their families, but he was in love with Julia until his last breath, having a long-standing friendship as childhood friends. Their relationship was special, and the two of them fit together like puzzle pieces so there was no room for her. Dorothea craved Emperor's love to no avail, and also sought after Theon's love which was also futile. Her unlovable life. Theon kept pursuing Julia even after their marriage. They exchanged dozens of secret letters. Dorothea still remembers that face, beaming with hope as he wrote a countenance Theon never reserved for Dorothea. She prayed for Julia's death. And when a faithful subordinate fabricated a very plausible charge to lead Julia to her death, she was overjoyed. She was deluded that Theon would now be hers. But he chose death over her embrace, leaving her for Julia once again. In the end, his death was caused by his greed. Her selfish love killed him, and until now she blames herself for Theon's death. Ray introduces Julia as Theon's friend. Dorothea dream world breaks again and thinks Theon and Julia are inseparable even in this life. Dorothea leaves by saying that she remembers something she has got to do, and Dorothea feels like there is no room for her here again. She comes to her room and tells Governess to leave her alone. She wants to get rest. Governess leaves, and Dorothea cried her eyes out. A few days passed, and Raymond kept walking here and there. Dorothea got bothered about it and asked if he can't just stay still for a while. Raymond was nervous because today was the day when he officially became the crown prince. And he asked if he looks like a prince to her, and Dorothea tell him that he looks like a fool just like any other day. Raymond says Dorothea wouldn't be so nervous if she were in his place, and she goes through the ceremony gracefully, and she also smarter and more accomplished than him, and she would be making a fine empress. But Dorothea tells him that she can't since she can't weld the spirit, but Raymond believes that she will be able to soon enough. There's no way someone as incredibly gifted as her can't wield the spirit, but Dorothea knows that she will never receive the wield spirit. Ray asks if Dorothea give him a few encouraging words before he heads out, and Dorothea tell him to go make a mess of it. Then he asks for a hug, and Dorothea run away. And the event gets started. Ray enters the room, and Dorothea worried that Ray may not make a mistake, and Raymond smile at her without any reason, and Dorothea don't believe that a fool like Raymond is the heir, as they meet with the guests. Guests talk about how much Dorothea looks like her mother the late empress, and the emperor glances at them like he will going to kill them. Dorothea knows that she has to bear with this blatant rejection with no escape. The emperor and Ray are at the center of all conversations, and she is ignored and treated like a candlestick on the wall. She wants to be desperate to leave, but she can't because she is a millionaire. 
Raymond tells her to join them, but Dorothea just wants to leave, and Theon also there. Theon noticed that she hadn't touched any food or drink all evening, so he gave her the juice, and Dorothea felt good to know that he was watching her all this time. Theon heard Ray speak highly of her. Ray even said his sister was very intelligent and even mentioned that she know the disciplines of kingship by heart, and Theon is looked forward to seeing her at Episteme soon. Episteme, the empire most prestigious academy producing the finest minds in this land and the hub of all social. Connections among the nobility's youth advantageously forged for future relations. It's the alma mater of not only the elites in Yuvra, but also of royal families and nobles from abroad. However, unlike Ray, who was able to easily enroll in the empire's most prestigious academy, Dorothea was not afforded that privilege reasons being that she could not she must not overshadow the crown prince in any way. In her former life in rebellion of this injustice, she once snuck out of the palace and hurled a stone at Episteme that stone broke through a window and hit the eldest son of Duke Bronte in the head. Because of this incident, Emperor confined her to the palace. It was the final straw in her relationship with the Emperor. And she does not want to repeat that situation. So she tells Theon that she won't be going to Episteme because she does not want Theon to see that side of her. Dorothea decides to change the topic and Julia arrives middle of nowhere and tell him that his father is asking for him. And he left and Dorothea decided to head back to her room. She came to the emperor to ask if she could go now, but someone bumped into her. And the juice Theon gave her splashed on her. Her dress gets ruined, but Dorothea is upset about the juice Theon gave to her, and the Emperor tells Dorothea to apologize to the man who bumps into Dorothea, and Ray tells her that Dorothea did not do anything she is the victim, but Dorothea apologies to him. The man who bumps into Dorothea is none other than Duke Bronth, and Dorothea knows that something like this going to happen because she didn't expect anything nice from the Emperor. The Emperor tells his butler Robert to escort Dorothea to her room. And Dorothea noticed Theon and Julia looking at her and think did Theon see the pathetic sight of a powerless princess on display for all to see. And she can't bear their pitiful glances. Dorothea is okay with being treated like that by the Emperor, and she is also able to swallow her pride and apologize right away. But she simply cannot handle that look in Theon's eyes, which is upsetting her stomach. Dorothea know for a fact that Theon has no feelings for her, but seeing him with Julia makes her so jealous, and she telling herself to just let go of this, she must let him go. And suddenly she hears the knock at the door. It's Raymond he came to check on her, and ask if she wants to talk about it. But Dorothea tells him to leave her alone and go back to his party where he belongs, Ray makes himself clear that he can't go when she is here, and the party bores him. Dorothea is so mad that she opens the door and says that the ceremony is not something he can just leave and forget simply because he is bored of it. He is a crown prince now, so he should act like one. She grabs him and tell him that she don't need his pity and just leave her alone, as she's saying things like that the Theon and Julia stand right there hearing all that, and Theon asks if she is all right. Raymond brings Theon and Julia with him so they can all ditch the party and play together, but Dorothea slams the door in Raymond's face and thinks where has she gone wrong, and what will Theon think of her now? She feels pitiful and unlovable she despise herself. She wants to be good, better than everyone else. That's her resolution of repentance in this life. Dorothea was bedridden for days after the incident. She burned up with a fever and aches all over. And the governess taking care of her all the time. And the only thing Dorothea thinking in her fever is that she has to be good. After all, that's all he can do in this life. Many days passed by, and Ray never visited her. Dorothea thought that she was in such a rage he must hate her now, and it might be for the best, but Dorothea noticed someone watching her, and it was Ray. He brought her a present, and he hopes that Dorothea will like it. The present is the first crop of tomatoes he made a secret vegetable garden behind the castles. He also planted pumpkins and eggplants, and Dorothea thinks of him as the crown prince who was wasting all this time growing some vegetables in his little garden. Dorothea asks shouldn't he be busy studying instead of growing these, 
but Raymond studies from time to time, and Dorothea realizes that some people are vying to surpass her unlike her. She already has the world in her hands without any effort, and while enjoying all the time she has, Ray still manages to become the crown prince. Raymond asks if she is angry he knows that he kept bothering her although she told him she didn't want to play. Dorothea tells him that Ray can't become a good emperor that way. Since Dorothea decided to be good in this life, she tries to act like one. Despite her resolution to be good, there is a part of her that doesn't want Ray on that throne, and Raymond says that he will do her best as a brother she is proud of, and asks don't she wants to go outside sometimes she could be a little frustrating to be inside all day, but Dorothea hasn't been outside the palace walls, but she has already seen it all before in her previous life, so she just thinks as a waste of time. But Raymond tell her how much he is excited to show her the town and shop with her, but Dorothea refuse, but Raymond started to bother her almost like every day. Since she can't stand it any longer, she decides to go out, but only on one condition she's going alone, only the governess or a guard may escort her she doesn't want to go with Ray. Raymond is upset, but relief that Dorothea is least going out. And Governess gets Dorothea ready for outside, and Governess always dreamed of Dorothea wearing this outdoor dress, and she is so happy, so they head out before Dorothea changes her mind. They visit the town, and there are loads of people, so the Governess just tells her to hold on to her tightly, lest she gets lost, and Dorothea feels awkward walking while holding someone's hand. Dorothea looks at the Empire from up. And she remembers the empire full of war-worn cities, emaciated people, and blood. Soaked streets, she experiences what the empire looks like without a tyrant, and some guy gives the creepest smile while looking at the governess and the princess. Dorothea gets kidnapped, and they decide to get rid of the kid when they have the money in their hands. The kidnappers don't know that the kid they kidnap is the princess. Dorothea just seems like a rich kid to them because her dress is worth more than their house, that's why they kidnapped her, and Dorothea can't believe that this has happened to her four days ago. Governess and Dorothea shopping and had fun. And the kidnappers hit the governess from behind and grab Dorothea and take her with them. Dorothea doesn't mind dying a little sooner, but she does not want to be killed by these good-for-nothing thugs. It's been four days since she was kidnapped, but they get no answer from Dorothea's family, and Dorothea feels weak and parched. Dorothea is sure that the governess would be doing her best to get things straightened out. But she feels like her father might just abandon her, and she can't wait for the emperor to act. So Dorothea decides to pretend to be a powerless little girl. She asks gently if they would take off the cloth on her eyes, and one of the kidnappers takes it off. Dorothea asks who they are, and the man's name is a tutu. Dorothea asks if Mr. Tutu is her new governess, but he said no. Then Dorothea asked if they are his daddy's friends. Dorothea decides to pretend like a foolish kid, so that's what she is doing, and Mr. Tutu is flattered to see a kid that cute. Tutu calls her a china doll and pretty, and Dorothea remembers the scoundrel who says those words to her almost every day. Kidnapper Tutu started to act like her uncle, and Dorothea tells him that she is hungry. After all, she hasn't eaten anything for days, and kidnappers already eating, and her mouth gets watery to see the food they eat. Tutu makes her sit at the chair so she can also join them with the meal, but Danny tells Tutu to tie her to her place again, and Dorothea feels weak and dizzy because she hasn't had food. Danny tells her that they are not their uncles, and they brought her here to kill her because he can't stand spoiled, noble brats like her. He grabs her hand and slams her to the wall, and Tutu tells Danny to stop and ties her again. And Danny sees Scorpion under their table, and they both freak out to see the scorpion. Dorothea makes a deal if she catches that scorpion they have to give her some bread and milk and ask for two sticks to catch the scorpion. Kidnappers decide to untie her and Dorothea catches the scorpion easily. And the kidnappers tell her to throw it out and that they will give her food. As she walks out she notices that they are in the basement. And when she comes out she sees nothing but a sandy desert there in the middle of nowhere, and running away is not an option now so she decides to go back inside again. 
they keep their promise and give her the food. And Tutu tells Danny that the princess has disappeared from the archipelago. They say she's been kidnapped. Dorothea takes the dagger and eavesdrops on them. Danny decides to kill Dorothea since they kidnapped none other than the princess. They are afraid if they spare her and she blabs her pretty little mouth. They are done for. So Dorothea has no choice but to weld a sword. Danny comes out of the room to kill her and Dorothea slashes him from behind. But Dorothea is too weak and the blade barely cuts him. Danny grabs her neck, slams her to the wall, and tells her that there's is nothing she can do now. Dorothea gets super mad to hear that because of everything that happened to her life, she really couldn't do anything about it. She couldn't do about Ray being the crown prince. She couldn't do to get her father's attention. She couldn't do to have Theon's heart. She kicked Danny, grabbed the dagger, and slashed his leg, and Danny got scared to see her unmercy eyes, those eyes from her former life. I stunned at the sight of a monster. All she wanted was to survive. Dorothea told Danny just to leave her alone. She had resolved to be good. What more did they all want from her? She just wanted to be left alone in peace until she died. And with that, Dorothea left that place. The sun is down. And she hasn't seen the light in sight anywhere. And she fearful of her powerlessness. And she wishes if only she could have wielded the spirit of light would things be any different. And if she were airy, they would have rescued her by now. She thinks of herself as pathetic to think this useless thought in the situation and thinks if this is how she will die. And she sees the light and hears the sound of horse hooves coming this way. Dorothea get up and flay her hand in the air and think if it is a search party from her father. She collapses and can't believe her thoughts after all that neglect from the emperor, but that is who she is. But she still can't help but believe that someone will love her one day, whoever that may be, and Dorothea fainted. When Dorothea wakes up, she finds herself in the palace. She encounters the royal knights, and she hears the emperor's voice talking to the maid. Dorothea thinks that maybe he come to check in on her. He is her father, after all. But all her father is care about is the royal family's reputation, which is in danger because some thugs kidnapped the royal princess. Dorothea disappointed again because he didn't come to check on her. Next day, doctor comes to check on her. Her temperature is dropping, but she recovering not as fast as he expected. Dorothea notices the new governess beside her and thinks if that governess is fired. She feels bad because she was always so kind and sweet to Dorothea and hopes she is doing fine. The doctor suggests it would be better to rest in a quieter place. He recommends the seaside that is quiet and full of fresh air, and there is a suitable castle perfect for such a stay in the secretion region. Dorothea sees the perfect opportunity to leave the palace and be away from the emperor, Ray, Theon, and Julia. She will be away from prying eyes to hone her strength and pace, and Dorothea decides to go. But the governess tells her that she can't go by herself in that big castle. Raymond arrives with flowers and asks how is Dorothea. He's been coming to see her every single day since the incident. He also heard about Dorothea going to that seaside castle and asks if Dorothea really have to go there. But Dorothea says she wants to go and ask Ray to leave and also tell him that it's not his fault she was kidnapped so there's no need for him to visit and Raymond really was blaming himself all this time. He begs Dorothea to not go because she would be alone there and asks why she doesn't join him at Episteme. She is smarter than him so it would be no problem for her, but she refuses because she knows no matter how much she will try it's no point. And she makes her decision so she just tells Raymond to leave she need to rest. Dorothea know that Ray is good, and she is rotten, it's always been like that, so it's time she made her exit. A few days later, as she was ready to leave, Theon arrived there. He heard Dorothea was going away for a while, and Dorothea didn't want to be seen by Theon right now. Dorothea asked what brought him here. Theon brought candies for her. He thought she might get motion sickness on her journey and ask if she doesn't like sweets, and Dorothea is happy that Theon brought these for her. She thanked him for thinking of her, and Theon said that he won't be able to see her for a while, and hope she makes a swift recovery and returns to them soon. Dorothea's hope grew again. 
because Theon never cared for her like this in her former life, but she stopped herself from thinking that way, and off, and Dorothea happy that at least he thinks of her. Dorothea arrived at her new castle, and she felt like having a huge weight off her chest to being away from the palace, the palace where she killed Ray and where Theon died the place riddled with bad memories only, and she thought of starting a new beginning here. The castle maid Clara requested her not to go off unaccompanied. She'd be devastated if Dorothea got lost. Clara also introduced her to her knight, who would be guarding her from now on. His name is Stefan Greenwall, and Stefan is the man who once died at her sword. And think how did Stefan end up here to guard a mere powerless princess? Dorothea outstretched her hand, and she is glad to meet Stefan, but he gave no answer, and the maid remind him that the girl before him is the princess. Instead of giving her a handshake, Stefan gave her a high five. Dorothea started to think if she will be going to be okay here. Dorothea realized by now that her mere resolution to be good is not enough to live a life of goodness. To reach her goal, she decides to make some guideposts to keep her on the path. Clara and Stefan see the list she is making and Clara starts to laugh and tells Dorothea how adorable she is. Clara asks why don't she gives her father ten massages, but she feels gross just thinking about it. Then Clara suggests how laughing ten times a day. And she even gives it a shot to smile like a ray, but then she twitches forcefully making her face smile. Dorothea tell Clara and Stefan to leave she will think herself. First she writes to smile kindly once a day, second not to covet what belongs to another, the throne is Ray's, and Theon is Julia's, third saving a million people, saving lives must be a good deed. She wondered how many deaths she caused in her former life. Not only did she kill people with her sword, but she started wars. She forced labor upon her subjects and turned a blind eye to disasters, diseases, and poverty. The death toll must have been at least 50,000, thousands of people who could have been spared, had Ray Sar on the throne dead because of her, in repentance. She will aim to save Tice many lives in this life. She also adds to the list be thanked thrice a week and donate at least a million balance every month. Now as she writes the things to start with she gets tired, as she watching the beautiful, see, and tell Clara and Stefan that she wants to go to the beach and Stefan also accompanies her. Stefan is not that talkative, so Dorothea feels she is all by herself, and she likes that. As she goes a little further, she sees someone, and Dorothea doesn't have any idea that there is anyone else living around here. The boy is Ethan Bronte. Ethan Bronte was the right hand of tyrant Dorothea millionaire, most beautiful man Dorothea have ever known, and also the most dangerous. He also known as the gold-eyed angel was the object of everyone's fantasies, men and women alike. An overwhelming presence, no one dreamed of opposing him, and he only had eyes for Dorothea, her faithful servant. Ethan brought her everything she adored, helped her kill Ray and Julia, and killed the people she hated on her behalf. Ethan was the single person who understands her, and she thought Ethan was her faithful servant. Ethan asks why do she stick Theon around her. If only she had married him instead of marrying Theon, he would have devoted his life to her. Dorothea realized her grave mistake only when she stood in front of death. As she walked up to the gallows, Ethan was exonerated of all wrongdoings by the people and dubbed the premier who defended the empire in the face of the tyrant. With a serpentine tongue, Ethan slithered out of all his crimes and Dorothea took all his ins up to the gallows. And they even wanted Ethan to be Dorothea's successor to the throne. Dorothea decided to avoid Ethan at all costs in this life. But as she lays her eyes on her, Ethan is crying, and Dorothea has never seen him cry like that as if he is a completely different person. And think what if Ethan never stepped into the dark side? What if they both could be good? Then maybe Ethan can also have a new lease on life. Dorothea asks what is he doing here, but Ethan just runs off, and Dorothea thinks maybe she disturbed him, maybe he wants to be left alone to cry in peace, and thinks what could be the reason for him to cry like this. Then she remembers that Ethan is the son of the basted Duke Bronte. 
being Duke Bronte's son born out of wedlock, Ethan was not allowed to enroll in episteme and was not allowed to appear at social events until he became an adult. As soon as the news spread that the Empire Princess was down at the coast, Invitations Flood informed all the noble ladies nearby who wanted to be acquainted with Her Royal Highness. The nearby duchesses tried to falter her and treat her like a child, but they just all vying to make connections with her for social status, and Dorothea is exhausted and feel like he being surrounded by hundred rays, and among those royal ladies, Duchess Bronte Ethan's stepmother is also there she extends an invitation to their manor, and accepting an invitation to the Bronte manor means she might run into Ethan. Ethan is lingering in her mind, and so Dorothea accepts her invitation. The next day, in the carriage she thinks that she is always the weaker one in a love relationship perhaps she is just not made to give or receive love. And if is it even possible for her to be good when she doesn't even know how to love? And Dorothea arrived at the Bronte Manor, and Duchess greet her and they have a meal, and she doesn't see any sign of Ethan. And the Duke asks if there is anything he can do to ease her stay. Dorothea asks about their son, and the Duke thinks she must be talking about Jonathan, but Dorothea tells her that she is talking about her other son Ethan and she would like to meet him. And the Duke asks if Dorothea has met their son before, and she tells them that she saw him the other day while walking on the beach. And the Duke and the Duchess totally get the wrong idea that Dorothea is interested in their Ethan and she might be fallen in love at first sight with him. Dorothea said that Ethan and she could be friends. The maid escorts her to Ethan and he is sitting all alone. And the maid tell him that the princess come to visit him and he is honored to meet her. The maid left them alone and Dorothea also tells Stefan to step outside too. Ethan act like they meet the first time. And Dorothea thinks maybe he doesn't want to bring up their encounter at the beach, Ethan being caring and gently. Dorothea tries to notice his eyebrows. Ethan's eyebrows twitch it's a habit of his when he is lying, and realizes he is not being truthful with her right now. As Dorothea staring at him, Ethan notice and ask if there's something on his face, and Dorothea make the cheesy line that Ethan has good looks it's all over his face, and Ethan blush all over the place and ask what good looks. Yeah, right like the dude has not well aware of his handsome looks, the Ethan. Dorothea knows of from her former life is more brazen, and she didn't know Ethan was so different as a child. Ethan says that she is the most beautiful person he has ever met in his life and tells her that he don't have any friends because her brother doesn't like him being outside, and even if he were to go outside, nothing good ever happens. Ethan realized that he said way too much so he smacks her mouth and tell her that he means to say he is delighted to have her over. Dorothea used to fall for his sugar-coated words in the past which is why it's dangerous to be near him, but if they could be friends maybe he could live a different life and tell Ethan to come over to her castle sometimes. Ethan is so happy that he kisses her on the cheek and thanks him and Dorothea doesn't believe that Ethan does that, and Ethan is so excited. Meanwhile, at the castle, Clara is worried about Dorothea's birthday present because her birthday is coming soon, and she's so bothered what gift she should take for her since she didn't like anything easily, so she just decided to plan surprise for her, and the birthday day arrived, and Clara make a lot of yummy food for her. And Clara suggests to have a walk to the beach since the weather is so good, as they come to the beach, Clara tell her to look at the shell, and the way she's acting, Dorothea figures that her words is scripted. She pick up the shell, and just like that, she collecti many, and Clara is disappear from the behind. She just want to distract her and see a man wearing lion coming towards her, and it's none other than Stefan, and he act like a mighty lion Leo. The other day, Dorothea, using the book story of Mighty Lion Leo cover to hide the actual book she's reading, the picture of the book cover she used for her books. Dorothea really want him to stop, but she decide to just go with it. It will be her good deed for the day. And Stefan acting like a Mighty Lion Leo and Dorothea feel bad for him. She give him all the shells she picked up and ask if he is here because it's her birthday. And instead of saying anything, he just tap on her shoulder and say roar. Dorothea grateful to them because she can feel what it's like to have someone go the extra mile for her. 
Stefan lift her up and give her a walk and Dorothea doesn't believe that she is in Stefan's arms a loyal knight to Ray in the former life. He scoffed at Stefan's loyalty to death, belittling the socially inept knight who came from humble beginning as a mercenary, and suddenly the rain starts and Stefan take Dorothea to the castle again. And Stefan leaves, he doesn't want to take the costume off in front of him because he wants to keep Dorothea fantasy alive. After coming back to her room, Dorothea finds a letter from Raymond, but she tosses it aside and decides to read it later. Stefan arrives and Doroth asks where her birthday present is. Stefan promises to give her later, but later it won't be her birthday anymore so as a present she wants Stefan to teach her swordsmanship. She is weak and she hates being weak. She felt weak in front of those scary kidnappers. She had been staying away from swords in fear that the sword in her hand would end up in tragedy and more greed. But that day she realized that good people also need to be strong. So she told him to teach her. Stefan is so touched by her speech and he decides to teach her. Few months later, she got better with her training and Ethan shocked her. Dorothea thought it was Stefan. Ethan told her that she was getting better by the day, but Ethan was not skilled in swordsmanship. And Dorothea remembered that she had never seen Ethan wield a sword. He had countless number of supporters would gladly draw their swords on his behalf. And Ethan tells her that he is glad to see that she is feeling better and swipe her sweat off. And all the maids gather to see adorable Master Ethan and watching two angels together. Seriously, they don't have anything better to do. Ethan grabs her hand and asks to give her a tour of her lovely castle, and Dorothea says that she needs to go and wash first. Ethan says perhaps they can start their tour in the castle bathroom. Ethan just talks about washing her hands and face, but Dorothea imagines something else. Ethan is just cracking a joke, which we all wouldn't understand. Ethan doesn't have the talent to crack a joke on someone. Ethan tells Dorothea to take her time. He will be waiting for her after her bath. Dorothea show him her bedchamber. Ethan brought a present for her since he doesn't want to come empty-handed, and it is a very valuable pendant. But Dorothea refuses to accept such a valuable thing. Dorothea tells him that they had only just met this as a kind of trinket he should gift it to someone very special and dear to him. But to Ethan, Dorothea is someone special and dear. He apologizes if he burdened her. And Dorothea suggests that they should head back to the training ground. And Ethan sees the handkerchief on the table that Theon gave it to her. And Dorothea hides it from him and tell her that it's a gift from someone. And Ethan also decides to gift her a handkerchief next time, if she accepts that kind of gift. The next day, all the maids whisper about something. And Dorothea is curious about what could that be. Clara. Ask how would she feel about returning to the royal palace. Actually, is a deadly disease spreading around here. It's like the flu. But much worse, they were told it escalates to pneumonia and has killed many already. It's curable, but it is highly contagious and the cost of medicine is too expensive for most people. Dorothea starts to think about the idea of staying because she doesn't want to leave the castle just yet. And she finds the perfect opportunity to knock out some of the items on her how to be a good list. Dorothea suggests that if there's a cure, they can cure them. She can pay for the medicine and healthcare staff. She is the royal princess after all. She may lack a good heart, but she has lots of wealth, and the power of wealth was greater than she ever anticipated. Her royalty and wealth solved all hardships, and the epidemic started to die down within a fortnight that the villages that were impacted by the epidemic returned to vibrancy, and Clara is so proud of the princess. And someone left the potatoes in front of the castle gate saying thank you. The villagers showing the expression of their gratitude. And Ethan tells her that the people she helped will remember her as a truly good person and no good deed has resonated with her in the past. But it is different this time Dorothea is happy that someone expressed their gratitude and asks Ethan if he would like to stay for dinner. Three years have passed. Stefan and Dorothea training their hearts out, and Dorothea facing difficulty in beating Stefan. Clara calls them back to the castle for lunch. Stefan stops her attack with his hand and takes her inside. Meanwhile, Raymond is upset because Dorothea hasn't written back in three years, 
and Theon tells him that Her Highness must be reading his letter, but couldn't find time to write him back. Theon misses Dorothea when they parted he didn't expect them to be far apart for this long, and suggest why don't Ray go and visit her because it is almost vacation. Raymond is so excited to see his sister again. Clara yells at them to train for so long because she is worried for both of them and takes Dorothea for a bath. They received the gratitude with vegetables every month for the past three years, and Dorothea sees the boy who happens to bring these vegetables. She wants to return the favor by inviting him to dinner, but he makes a run for it every time. And this time they receive two letters from the royal palace. One is from Ray and Dorothea doesn't even read his letters. The other letter is for Stefan, a letter about a promotion exam. It's an opportunity for Stefan to rise to a higher rank in knighthood, and also an opportunity for him to leave the castle for good. Clara is happy for him, and so is Dorothea, and this opportunity only comes once in every few years, and he has to leave soon, and it comes with a postscript no plans for a replacement which means that the royal palace will no longer provide a guarding knight for Dorothea's safety and protection. Dorothea says that this is a very peaceful place, so she will be fine. And she can protect herself with the swordsmanship that Stefan teaches her. Dorothea is surprised that the emperor has proven such generosity till now. And Dorothea tries to show Stefan that she is happy and requests that he stay another day and leave the day after tomorrow. She wants to give him a proper send-off. Stefan holds her hand gently and tells her that he is her guard knight. Guarding her is his utmost mission duty, but Dorothea tells him that he should aim higher. People will call him a fool. Why would he choose the inferior choice when there is a better one? Stefan only follows his heart. The heart wants what it wants. Stefan was always like this even in her former life. Even when defeat was imminent, Stefan stood his ground when Raymond's defeat was imminent. He was a man who made foolish choices with honesty. Dorothea hugged him and thanked him for choosing the inferior choice. The next day, Stefan and Dorothea visit the town, and very few people gather and try to read the poster on the wall. Dorothea is a little curious, so she also wants to see since she wouldn't see anything Stefan lifts her and helps her to see. The post is about an amateur swordmanship competition this year. Registration opens today at the square till tomorrow the tournament will be carried out according to age groups, and the prize is a lot of money, and Dorothea wants to register as they come to register for the competition. The man tells them that this competition is not for children and tells Dorothea to come back when she is all grown up, but the rules state that anyone over the age of 10 is eligible to compete, and the man gets mad to see her talk back. And he starts bad-mouthing her and talking about her parents and her manners. But Stefan step up and tells him to follow the rules, and he registers her name without a second thought as they heading back home. Ethan and his brother is also in the town, and Jonathan tells Ethan to call him master since there is too much crowd and Ethan carries too many boxes. He breaks the gifts that Jonathan bought, Jonathan slaps Ethan and tells him to clean up, and he raises his hand again to hit Ethan. But Dorothea comes in the middle and tells him to stop, and Stefan grabs Jonathan's hand. Dorothea reaches her hand to help Ethan stand, and Jonathan asks does she even knows who he is. Dorothea asks if he knows who she is, and warns Jonathan that she showed mercy this time because she is good, but he better watch his words if he wants to live long, and grabs Ethan's hand and takes him with her. Dorothea notices his swole cheek, and Ethan tells her that he is used to it now. Ethan is Jonathan's half-brother, that's why he hates him so much, and asks if it all right with her can he stay with her until the master simmers down a little. Dorothea said yes to see his pretty charming face when she came back home. Raymond is waiting for her and told her how much he missed her, and Dorothea is shocked to see him, and the Theon has also come with her, and he relief that Dorothea remember him. Dorothea asks why is Theon here. Ray is the one inviting Theon to come. Dorothea grabs Ray's hand, drags him to her room, and slams the door. Dorothea came here to forget it all and to live her life anew, so why must they torment her by following her here? She is defeating the purpose of her departure. Ray thought since Dorothea and Theon know each other he took him, and Theon also wanted to come, 
And Dorothea said what about her? About her consent, her permission, her feelings, don't he ever thought about her? Raymond thinks it would make her happy like a surprise present. But Dorothea calls their visit a disaster and tells him to leave immediately. Ray starts to cry and thinks maybe her sister might be lonely all alone in this big castle. He just came to see her, and Dorothea decides to leave. She would only get angrier if she stays. As she opens the door, the Theans stand in front of the door. Dorothea run away. She only wants Theon to see the best of her. Theon grabbed her hand and asked for her time. He apologized for coming here all of a sudden and regretted not sending someone to deliver the news in advance. Theon thinks that Dorothea may be upset because he was not even part of the royal family and came without permission, and he tells her that he only wanted to see her again after seeing her off like that three years ago. He was been worried about her so he told Ray that he wanted to join and ask if Dorothea is uncomfortable with his presence. Dorothea tells him that she is not, and Theon relief, and asks her why she always has that look on her face whenever she sees him. But Dorothea doesn't even know what kind of face she makes. Theon just wants to get along well with her. And it's the same thing that Dorothea wants for them to get along well together. She has said those exact words to him hundreds of times, and now he wants to repeat these words back to her. The pretty boy Ethan ruined the moment and asked if Dorothea happened to know some medicine for his cheek, and Dorothea excused Theon and leave with Ethan, and Ethan glance at him. Dorothea take him to find medicine, but Ethan tells her that he doesn't need it, and he thinks that Dorothea should take the medicine. Dorothea tell him to go back, she will want to stay in that room. As Ethan goes back, he sees Theon. Theon asks who is he, Ethan introduces himself, and Ethan tells him that Dorothea put the medicine herself on his cheek when Theon asks if Ethan gets the medicine. Theon wants to talk with Dorothea, but Ethan stops him and tells him that Dorothea wants to rest because she is quite exhausted after being out of town with him, and Theon asks if they are close. Ethan says they are not really, but they are close enough for Dorothea to apply medicine to his face when he hurt which is a lie, and close enough to see each other at least once a week. Ethan smirked and headed back home. Dorothea practiced, but she couldn't improve her smile. She always made the worst look when she was with Theon, and that bothered her. Someone knocked on the door and Dorothea thought that it could be Theon, but it was Stefan. Dorothea tell him to sit next to her, and tells him that she had a terrible nightmare, and there was a person she loved in this dream, but this person doesn't like her he hates her so much that he ended up dead in her room. And she has been thinking about this for a long time because she was born by killing her mother that maybe she just a bad person from the beginning, and maybe that's why she can't be loved and she destined to be a bad person no matter what she do. And it scared her sometimes. There may only be evil in the roots of Dorothea and that she has been evil since birth. Stefan hugs her and tells him that she is a good child and Dorothea wants to be good. Meanwhile, Clara rushes into Dorothea's room to find her, but she sees Ray. He is crying. When she asked what happened to him, Ray tells her that he thinks that Dorothea hates him, and she said that his visit to see her is a disaster, has been waiting to see her, and he wishes that Dorothea likes him and asks governess what Dorothea likes or dislike. Clara tells her that she likes swordsmanship and tells him about the competition. And Ray thinks that Dorothea will might see his worth if he wins the competition. Theon arrives and tells them that her highness doesn't seem to be feeling well. Clara leaves to check on him and Raymond gets so worried. And Theon blames himself because he thinks that she is in a bad mood because he is here. And he incidentally sees the handkerchief that he gave her. Theon thinks that she might have thrown it away. Later that night, Dorothea couldn't sleep and decides to return his handkerchief. The handkerchief flies away and falls in the garden, and Theon also happens to be there and asks why is she up so late. Dorothea want to give back to him, so she just tells Theon to take the handkerchief back. And Theon tells her that she looked better when she smile and tell her to stay there for a moment. Theon climb the tree and thank her for not running away. Theon is the one who always ran away from her, and now he thanked her for not running away. Dorothea feels like she might cry. Dorothea reached her hand because it was too precarious over there. He was just a few inches from death, 
and Theon couldn't figure her out, and so did Dorothea. Theon meant to ask her if she was uncomfortable with him, and Dorothea told him that she was not. Theon was relief and told her that he was glad to see her again, and he missed her, and Dorothea think if it's some kind of dream she can't believe that Theon who used to run away from her, telling her that he missed her. And Theon tells her that she can keep the handkerchief if she likes. Dorothea is super happy because she never received a gift from Theon before, and he leaves. But as Dorothea lying down on the bed, she keeps thinking about Theon. But then she realized that she should stop herself and remind her the list of how to be good. Theon is Julia's, and think what she going to do if Theo by any chance started to like her someday. The next day Clara is told that Dorothea has entered the competition. Clara has no idea that Dorothea is competing without knowing that. She gave Raymond the idea of entering the competition without knowing that Dorothea is also joined. And now Clara is worried about what will happen if Raymond and Dorothea compete with each other. And the day of the competition arrives, and they find out they both entered this competition, and they both refuse to step back now. Thanks for watching. Comment your favorite part, and please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us a lot.